Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Um, thanks for being here. There's a couple of things I'd like to talk about before I start. One is a big thank you to VFS for providing some excellent employees to propaganda. Um, I really mean this. Uh, you know, working in the UK and bringing people in from university is a bit of a mixed bag. Uh, the employees that I've got in for Tron are outstanding um, and will be looking to VFS in the future. Secondarily, um, design process and design is a very subjective topic. Um, so what I'm going to talk about, uh, I'm not preaching about, I should say. Um, it's my opinion, having worked for a number of different companies, both good and bad, big and small, um, this experience that I've garnered culminates in the kind of pres presentation that's coming forward. So I'm not trying to force this on anyone, so take from it what you will. So who am I? Um, I think I'm 14, 15 years into the industry now. I started in QA at a company called Codemasters, pretty much when it started. Um, it was a great adventure, um, and I was mentored in driving games, some of which you'll recognize, some of which you won't. Um, these are some of the games that I had the honor to work on. I'm very proud of all of them for different reasons. Um, and there you are. So that's a, a small subsection of games that I've worked on. So what I want to talk about first uh, is a little bit about uh, what's the perception of what a game designer is and what he does. Um, and I think it's quite varied. But So I've tried to kind of nail down the four main things. So I think it's fair to say that uh, a game designer is seen as a creative conceptor, but also someone who's creative in terms of process. And it's this element of game design that can be very beneficial to a team. And we'll go into this in, in detail uh, further into the presentation. This one's interesting. This is both a good and a bad thing. Uh, some people see game designers as just hardcore gamers. Um, and others see game designers as very uh, experienced uh, people that understand the, the games industry as a whole, the different genres, uh, and have a good kind of macro understanding of uh, where the industry is going. But it's fair to say that most game designers know quite a bit about games, and if they don't, they should. Now, this is really subjective, uh, certainly for me. So we've got uh, Miyamoto up there, you know, a god to some people, well, nearly everyone in the industry. I think that there's an unfair kind of expectation on designers themselves to be these champions of fun. At the end of the day, it's, uh, you know, fun has a massive part in terms of how well the product's going to sell, how well the product's reviewed. And this, to me, is probably the core of what I'm going to talk to you about in the presentation, because my belief is that fun doesn't come from the, de the game designer per se. It comes from the game designer working appropriately and partnering with the team to basically bring the fun out of the game. And, I, and so to me, it's, uh, it's a bit of a subjective uh, attribute of a game designer. And then this next one is something we're all gonna, I'm going to basically talk about in the presentation as well. And I think that for most designers, this is uh, pretty much true. And it's true for a number of reasons. One, the designer is unable to communicate his vision properly to the team. Two, he has communicated uh, his vision to the team, but the vision basically goes off in a different direction. Uh, or simply, uh, the designer can't communicate particularly well. So, this is what I think designers are. And so, people might think that this is basically a little bit controversial. But my 14 or 15 years in the industry have pushed me into this direction um, and have benefited both the companies I've worked with and the teams that I've worked with. And subsequently, uh, the games in terms of sales uh, have benefited as well. So, I believe that designers are actually service providers a service provider to the team, a service provider to the customer, and a service provider to the stakeholder. So the customer and the stakeholder have a big part in this presentation. And, and I kind of front load the presentation to discuss those, and we'll move on to that in a minute. But just to describe what the stakeholder is, uh, in my opinion, um, basically, it can be your, your GM, your general manager. It can be the publishing company. It can be your lead, for example. But the most important thing about the stakeholder is that he is supposed to represent the consumer. Um, if he doesn't represent the consumer, well, you'll see what happens in the rest of the presentation. So secondarily, the expectation of designers is to excel in their given expertise. Like, for example, we bring a racing game designer in. He's supposed to know and make the handling fun and so on. And that's his job. 
Well, I kind of disagree with that as well. I think that design is a multifaceted discipline. Um, the same as other disciplines are uh, across the team, such as art and engineering. Um, and again, that's something we're going to talk about. But the most important element of being a service provider for everyone in a team, and especially design, is that we have to deliver what the customer wants. And this is where there's a little bit of a disconnect sometimes with companies in regard to the relationship between the stakeholder's understanding of what the customer wants and who the customer is in relation to what he's then communicating to the design team or to the um, team as a whole. So, the stakeholder. Um, this isn't actually supposed to be derogatory. I just think that it basically kind of outlines the overall goal of a stakeholder, at least what we perceive the stakeholder to be. So, what's his primary um, goal? Well, like I said, he he's supposed to represent the, the customer. And that means not just uh, marketing finding out who the, uh, the consumer audience is, but also things like uh, pushing the product into market once it's done, uh, putting forward uh, revenue to actually make the product, uh, actually make the product, um, and yes, finally representing the product in the marketplace. So that's a pretty simple understanding of what the stakeholder does. And ultimately, whilst as game developers and being you know very excited about being creative and some of us believing that what we do is an art or a vocation, ultimately the stakeholder is tasked with making money. Now the reason for this is because. So let's say, for example, he has shareholders, that's a very obvious reason. But the other reason is that he wants to keep the studio running or he wants to keep developing games. And ultimately, this goal of the stakeholder feeds back into um, the, uh, the consumer. Basically, if we're making money and we're selling games, then we're going to continue to sell games to the consumer and hopefully we're going to be providing them with the product that they expect. So, the customer. Uh, caffeined up PC gamer there. Not at all indicative of a, a gamer. He's our target audience. This is the person that we're selling our product to. He or she, sorry, don't mean to be sexist. Um, this is the person we're basically selling the product to. Now, I've worked at a lot of companies and I've been through different kinds of states about how I feel about the uh, customer, probably depending on either how well the product sells or how high the Metacritic is, and you can work out kind of my emotions in regard to that. But the industry is changing. Um, and it is true that the customer is the judge, jury, and executioner. At the end of the day, the customer is the guy who's paying the money. You're basically providing a service to him to meet and exceed his expectations. And that's a good thing, because basically they're the key to our success. They're the people that can tell us what type of game we should be making um, and what their expectations are. And like I said, they're the ones with the money at the end of the day. If they don't want to spend it on your product, then arguably that's your fault for not knowing what they wanted. So, what's this discussion about? We've talked about the stakeholder, we've talked about uh, the consumer. Some people are thinking, oh my God, what does this have to do with design? Um, but I need to set that up in order to explain the different roles that a designer has through the production of a game. Um, and to be honest, uh, I also feel, especially on the team I'm working on now, it's not something that's just about design. It also reflects on the other disciplines within the team too. So I'm going to go through a development cycle. Um, it's not of a particular game. And we're going to talk about the different roles and uh, basically good things and bad things. Uh, and ultimately, give an overview of what I think uh, a, designer, a designer's expectations are. So the first thing is, you basically, you've, we're talking about the first role. So that's basically the designer as an analyst. So you need to know initially what the, stake, uh, what the stakeholder's remit is. And so the kind of the fundamentals of this dynamic are that before you even start concepting, before you even start you know, putting pen to paper or prototyping, you need to understand what the pillars are or what the expectations are from the various people that we're going to look at now. And the first one, to my mind, is actually the stakeholder. Um, and I've got an image here of make money, and yes, that's all very mercenary and that kind of thing, but it's not just about making money. Um, the remit of a stakeholder, for example, can cover things such as they want to leverage a certain type of technology. In the next three years, they want to be uh, big in the social gaming space. So you can already start to see that you're getting pillars defined as to what the product's going to be, or at least the playing field to which you're going to design the product. Obviously, this is a very average-looking gamer here. Um, so 
The other thing is, and again very important, who is the customer? And you should be working with the stakeholder on this uh, to find out basically what compels them. And I think that there's a variety of different ways to uh, really kind of honing in on your target audience. I'm not going to go into the different types. But the one that I find most compelling or the one that seems to work the best for me is how do they spend their time rather than looking at something and saying, well, you know, what's their personality like and all that kind of stuff. So it's quite easy to basically get a good idea of uh, kind of how, you know, how they're spending their available time. So, for example, this average gamer um, likes Facebook. She likes uh, social networking. She might like some action games. Shameless plug there. Um, and she likes movies. Gosh, what could that be? Um, so you get a, you know, we're not going to, we're not going to basically use this as a model for the rest of the uh, presentation. But it gives you an idea of the kind of things that compels that person, and it's very important to have that understanding right from the outset. And also, uh, fundamentally, and you'll understand the importance of this going forward, that the stakeholder and the team are both aligned in terms of what the expectations of the consumer are. If that isn't the case. Right from the start, you've got problems. Um, and you see that a lot in, uh, in games that come out. That what the team basically thinks that they've designed the game for a particular consumer, and then it's marketed in a completely different manner.